I'm sure pleased that you managed to grab a few minutes to hop in here and it's delightful we're at this stage because we're talking about our Lord Jesus Christ it's in a series of uh, short pieces about growing in grace in qualities and today and tomorrow we're going to talk about humility and what a prime consideration that is in our growth in grace and we could say that humility was powerfully exemplified in Jesus Christ in contrast to Adam Adam his pride though made in God's image grasped at a status to which he had no right the humility of Jesus on the other hand in God's form renounced the status to which he had every right and as grace personified Jesus came from heaven to earth from glory to shame from master to slave from life to death before being raised in glory back to his father so let's just take this trajectory a moment do you remember the well the story in John 13 of Jesus in the upper room that a fateful night and you can imagine the scene where no one was acting as a servant Jesus stood up he laid aside his outer garments then wrapping a towel around himself he stooped to serve all his followers in that room hmm. apparently including Judas as well then after doing this task of a slave he rises puts back on his garments and sits down uh, perhaps they didn't quite comprehend the implications of all that in fact Jesus said did you understand what I just did but nevertheless thereafter they addressed him as teacher and Lord now we're going to compare that side by side with the description of humility characterized by Jesus in Philippians chapter 2 let me read it from this expanded translation and hopefully uh, you'll see uh, what we're getting at so Philippians 2 I think it's approximately from verse 6 onwards uh, it, it starts by talking about the glory that Jesus had in that um, heavenly context before coming to earth it says Jesus did not after weighing the facts consider it a treasure to be clutched and retained at all hazards this being an equality with deity in the expression of the divine essence but himself he emptied himself he made void having taken the outward expression of a bond slave which expression comes from and is truly representative of his nature as deity entered into a new state of existence that of mankind and being found to be in an outward guise as man he stooped very low having become obedient to God the Father to the extent of death even such a death as that upon a cross and then he continues because of which voluntary act of supreme self-renunciation God also supereminently exalted him to the highest rank and power and graciously bestowed upon him the name the name which is above every name in order that in recognition of the name all which the Lord Jesus is in his person and work which Jesus possesses every knee should bend of those in heaven of beings on earth and of things under the earth in order that every tongue should plainly and openly agree to the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord resulting in the glory of God the Father that's quite the statement but we see the without 
doing a deep dive into theology and definitions, we see the motion emptying himself of his heavenly glory, taking the form of man as a humble servant, then serving others, um, dying, being raised, and then exalted to the thrones, the throne of God, as it were, clothed with that rank and glory again. Our responsibility, our impulse, therefore, is to confess him as Lord, teacher and Lord. So he stooped very low, just going back to the text of our Space for Grace comment here, he stooped very low to the extent of death upon the cross, like a, a powerful man stooping to lift up a heavy parcel from the floor to the top shelf. Jesus relieves us from the leaden load of condemnation and guilt to raise us up to his Father. Personal, personally, you could ask ourselves, do I welcome, even worship, submit to him as Lord and Sovereign over every area of my life? That sounds um, a tall order, or is it? Let's just reflect for a moment in, in the words of Revelation chapter 5. I'll, I'll stick to the same expanded translation if I may. Verse um, Revelation 5, the background, the backdrop is heavens with the angels and the elders and the living beings. And they're all singing um, in harmony with a loud voice. I can't imitate that, I'll just read the text. They're saying with a great voice, Worthy is the Lamb who has been slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honour and glory and eulogy, and every created thing which is in the heavens